It was right back in 1510 when the Portuguese, already installed further south in India, invaded Goa. And they were to remain in power there for four and a half centuries. That is a long time for its people to become attached to a culture and a way of life, even if it comes from halfway around the planet. Even when the British rule of India came to an end in 1947, Goa remained Portuguese. 14 years later, though, amid high tension between India and Goa's Portuguese leaders, India invaded 30,000 soldiers, capturing the land in just under 48 hours. That was then 60 years ago. The battle known, depending on your viewpoint, as either the liberation or the invasion of Goa. Freed from conflict, though, Goa quickly became a haven for travellers with its tropical climate, beautiful beaches and its parties. It was one of the final destinations of the famed hippie route in the 1960s that drew travellers on shoestring budgets from Europe and North America. Well, before coronavirus in 2019, the region was attracting 7 million visitors a year, the erstwhile hippie paradise invaded by unchecked tourism. Much of the Portuguese culture, though, remains. Locals holding on to their past, many still speaking the language, or even holding Portuguese passports. With Dia Gupta and Thomas Denis revisit Goa for France 24. Blue waters, lush palm forests and sandy beaches that stretch on for miles. Goa has long been a mecca for travellers from around the world. Tourists flock to the coastal state to take a break from their busy city lives and to lay in the sun. But it's only after the sun sets that this coastal paradise truly transforms. More than anything else, Goa is best known for its parties that go on all night long. How's it going? So craft is going to come on and uh, two, yeah, two. Good music. Alistair Leithorn has been a regular on Goa's party scene since he was 19. How's it going? Nearly 20 years on, he now considers the state home and has turned his passion into a thriving yeah. business. <laughs> As a promoter for a music management company, He's used to organizing parties like this one. And at 1 a.m., the night is only just starting. Goa's party culture means more to Alistair than just drinking and dancing. It's a close-knit community, which he considers family. This is the party destination of India. And there's a lot that happens over these parties. It's just not a party. There are business deals that happen, there are relationships that happen. You know, the marriages that happen over these parties. But the last year has been difficult for Alistair and his crew. Goa has become more of like a, a weekend getaway now, rather than, because no Westerners can really come here, uh, you know, on a tourist visa, so there are hardly any Westerners here, just the ones that have been uh, locked down here. Most of the Indian tourists don't really come for the beaches. You know, they, they, they want to come here, party, get high. That's about it. In the early days, Goa attracted a very different kind of tourist. It's about the, the diversity of, 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 of the hippie culture that was here. There are people coming here from all, all, all other countries, right? So there's so much of diversity, and that's what makes it special. Back in the 60s, Goa's untouched, sandy beaches became a magnet for a specific kind of Western traveler. Frequently caricatured as junkie nudists with no aim or purpose, the hippie community was, in reality, instrumental in shaping the state's identity and economy. In fact, many of the original hippies never really left. Modern India has given me everything. And you know I'm going to be 74 next month. And here, <laughs> I'm 20 years old, like when I came for the first time to Goa. Marianne Borgo first came to Goa from France over four decades ago. I landed in Goa and uh, instantly, you know, it was just the, the total freedom because it was the only place in India where you already had a community, international community, mixed with the Goans. So it was just uh, 
Magic, 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 magic. Oh, Bougainvillea. On venait faire du yoga ici. C'était un endroit extraordinaire. It's Tuesday, and Marianne has invited us to a weekly evening get-together with a group of old friends. Hey, Jessie! How are you, darling? You look wonderful! Yeah, happy Aries. <laughs> so hot, huh? Woo, here we are. Here we get too. Ooh la la! Ah ben, ils sont déjà tous à table. Ils sont déjà tous à table. They've known each other for decades and meet every week to eat, drink, play patank and catch up. Raka, the host of the patank party, is a kind of local legend. He made his way from California in 1969 when Americans his age were being drafted to fight in Vietnam. I don't have the, the necessary uh, prerequisites for hippiedom, that is to say. My hair is gone, <laughs> so no more long hair. But I'm, I'm, I guess I'm still proud to be called a hippie. When he first landed, Goa wasn't quite the tourist paradise that it is today. There was no electricity, there was no uh, running water, there were no, no indoor plumbing or toilets to speak of. So it was really for the, for the initiated, you know, for people who could live under those circumstances. It is we who created the music, the art, the environmental movement and so forth, uh, a new kind of political resistance, a new kind of consciousness. We didn't trust authority and that of course was the big attraction of Goa because there were no authorities here. There was no one to tell us what to do. There's still a lot of freedom in Goa. You can still do pretty much whatever you want. I mean, it turns out the younger generation isn't interested about taking off their clothes on the beach. Goa's first travelers fell in love with its immaculate beaches and tried to keep it that way for a long time. In fact, when we would travel during the summer, amongst the people who frequented here, we would never actually say the word Goa. It was always referred to as the beach. But the world found out soon enough. And by the mid 90s, millions of tourists began arriving in droves each year. Today, 40% of the state's revenue comes from tourism, which is a boon and a curse at the same time. Many beaches are overrun with restaurants, bars and hotels, while floating casinos and cruise ships crowd the state's rivers, blaring music on loudspeakers through the night. But as the revelers retire to bed and the music dies down, a new brand of conscious go and tourism kicks off. This bay has a lot of human pressure and traffic all day long. Bright and early at 7 a.m., Pooja Mitra is all set to take her customers on an eco-friendly dolphin tour through Goa's estuaries and mangroves. I really want to thank you all for choosing us and coming out and supporting our impact work because we are really hoping to transform the way uh, this trip is done in Goa. Pooja fell in love with the Goan Ocean as a child. As an adult, she saw the adverse impact that reckless development had on Goa's environment and resolved to do something about it. Eventually, she founded her company in 2017 in order to promote thoughtful ecotourism in the state. Look at this coastline, see how beautiful it is. And they're just hacking into it there. So many snakes, bird life, you know. Goa is part of Western Ghats, biodiversity hotspot, global biodiversity hotspot. And yet it's been so badly harmed by this image of you know, party and drinking, and there's nothing beyond that. And if all this is gone and replaced with hotels and homes and villas and whatnot, um, you know, you lose the very thing that allows Goa to be green and beautiful and the reason why so many people like to come here. On rough days like this, when the waves are high, Pooja's beloved dolphins are difficult to spot. Well, at least you had a quick glimpse. So you know I'm not making it up, they are there. If consumers change, why they come to Goa? We're not really searching for parking different iPhone all that. That kind of tired reach to visit which has been on for too long. If you want the whole ecosystem to benefit and the community to benefit, then people also visiting have to change what they're asking for. 
have to be open to the idea of trying something new. Her customers leave the tour with a new perspective of the region. The construction and development is definitely putting a huge burden on the environment and my concern is that you know, all these mangroves and the forests on the hills, like she said, and the cyclones, we're going to have floods and all kinds of natural disasters, which I think people don't realize. They want a view of the hills or the water or the paddy fields, and I think it's all going to come crashing down if we keep cutting into it. In recent years, Goans have also recognized the need to preserve their unique, centuries-old Portuguese heritage. Some, like Hignio Emilio Ribello, have devoted a lifetime to that effort. The folding desk, and this came from Portugal. I sat in these benches from 1959 to 1961. The transition of a regime from Portugal to India. Today he runs the Hotel Rebelo, where he believes Goa's last Portuguese governor signed the Treaty of Surrender to India. For him, the hotel is a historically significant site. Mr. Ribello has meticulously preserved photographs and artifacts from that era, including certificates in Portuguese that belong to his family. He was only 14 when the Portuguese left, but remembers those days with surprising clarity. Early in the morning, around 7 o'clock, we heard bombardment. And we realized that the uh, airport was being bombarded by jets of Indian airports. So at about 12 o'clock, we heard this blasting sound, loud noise. Eventually, we came to know that the Portuguese forces had, which have dynamited, the blasted the bridge in order to, you know, ob to obstruct the movement of the Indian, incoming Indian troops. Mr. Ribello clutches on to his memories with an endearing stubbornness. His greatest fear is that one day this will all be forgotten. It's a fear that other Goans share but refuse to bow down to. Many Goans are successfully preserving and reviving their one-of-a-kind Indo-Portuguese heritage. That's most visible in Fontenas, Goa's famed Latin quarter lined with perfectly preserved colorful homes and quaint restaurants. The air you breathe here is different. <laughs> that is special. I don't know. There's something magical here. In this, 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 this place has some it's got a different air, it's a different atmosphere here. Ponte Inej is very close to my heart. I wish I, I could live here. <laughs> Orlando de Nerona is a local musician. He is a man on a mission to revive Fado, a 19th century style of Portuguese music characterized by its mournful tunes and lyrics. When he was a child, Orlando would walk through these streets as the sound of Fado wafted down from open balconies. I could imagine during the Portuguese days, people singing, playing the fado here. For example, you can just hear, you can hear a faint sound of the violin, a gentleman playing there in the window. We all, always spoke Portuguese at home. You see, right from childhood, my father insisted that we learn the language, you know, besides our Konkani, which is the mother tongue of Goa. Orlando studied the Portuguese guitar in Lisbon and now regularly performs the traditional music with his bandmates all over the world. In order to preserve this culture that's so close to his heart, Orlando and his family founded the Centre for Indo-Portuguese Arts in Goa. People in India didn't know what the father is, you know, so we had to educate them and explain what this art form is and how we are connected with it. Whatever we do here is with a lot of love, it, it has a lot of Portuguese influence with the Goan touch. This is my life. I've given my life to this.
Goan identity is varied, vibrant, and constantly evolving. Time has changed it in many ways, but the feeling of joy and indescribable magic in the air of this unique state remains constant. Dear Gupta and Thomas Denis, revisiting Goa for France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. You can, of course, catch it and all the previous editions as well on our website at france24.com. More news coming up very shortly. Thanks for watching.